Hey all, there's a couple little Photoshop tricks that I wanted to show that had a, a big impact on how I was able to get the uh, the final render here. And they're just a little bit complicated to show in still images with uh, with captions, but super easy to show if I can if I can have a little video here. So um, what I have is some screenshots of ZBrush. I, if I was actually compositing these in Photoshop, I would not have the, the UI. I would go into the uh, the render menu and just export the PSTs directly. But in this case, I kind of wanted to show you some of the things that were going on in the UI. So I have selected for my material this gray horizon. It comes by default with ZBrush. And in this case, for the first shot, what I did is um, use the default light and just kind of positioned the light so that it is sort of a top-down uh, view. And I want to have a shadowed area down here and a fairly well lit area up here. And then for the second image, what I have is kind of the inverse of that. So I just enabled a new light. I uh, expanded the light properties here because the shadows are not on by default with this light. So I just want to indicate that uh, you need to turn that on so you get uh, the same result from one shot to the next. And here we can see because of the position of the light, which I dragged down, it is a nice underlit shot there. And you need to be careful. Sometimes if you click this area, you'll actually move the light to the back of the sphere and then you get kind of a rim light. And I've actually got a, a different solution for rim lighting just because it, it, I think it works a little bit better. So what I want to do is I want to combine these so that I can get this nice kind of interesting lighting here where it feels like there's a, you know, some kind of a blue light underneath them. So what I'm going to do is add a uh, color balance to this. And I'm going to hold Alt and just click on this little boundary there between the layer and the color balance. So now the color balance is only going to be affecting the layer directly beneath it. And because I'm looking for kind of a bluish color there, I'm going to crank the blue all the way up and the cyan all the way up. And you can see the result here. So now I need to modify the layer blending here, or maybe not the blending, but the opacity of the various values, which you can do by, all you got to do is just double click on the layer and it will bring up your layer style menu. And if I drag this little icon towards the center, which you can see is it's going to begin to make any value that is below whatever value happens to be sitting at the marker will become transparent. So you can see what we're getting there immediately. It's starting to look kind of cool, but the edges can be a little bit crunchy, right? And we don't really want that to be quite that pixelated and nasty. So if you hold the Alt key and you just click it, you can actually drag it out and get a little bit of a fade out there, which can be, uh, which can give you that result, which looks pretty good. And uh, you can also change the color if you want. I just thought blue looked kind of nice with this. So um, you just throw a, a hue saturation on there or whatever. And then for rim lighting, I use this material called um, OK Graphite. I believe it is available for download for free from Pixelogic's website if it's not included by default with ZBrush. And then usually I'll just throw a mask on here and invert the mask. So we'll just go to adjustments, invert. And then um, actually before I do that, let me play with the blending here. I think it's like a like a screen. One of these gives a, a fairly nice result for the rim lighting. Yeah, lighter color. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add in my mask and invert it. And then into that layer, the mask itself, not the not the layer. I'm going to go ahead and just paint go to the brush, make it a little bit bigger. So my, my values here are, are pretty soft already. That's fine. And then you can just kind of go along the top of it. And if I, if I show you what the mask looks like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crude. So you can just go over here and maybe like add a, add a blur to it if you want. So with the mask selected, a little blur just to make sure we don't have any issues with like obvious strokes going on there so there is the impact of that and whatever like maybe it doesn't make as much sense for it to be that far over so you can just kind of paint it out i like it to be just like kind of along the edges there like this just a subtle effect and then i also will apply the flat color and then if you just, if you don't have any material IDs or vertex colors, you can go ahead and, and just uh, hit shift R and you'll get a nice white mask, which is kind of perfect because what I'd like to do here is I'm going to put a fill on top and we'll just pick some nice dark color 
go ahead and fill that. And then I'm going to select this area here. And I'm actually just going to invert that once again. So we'll do a, so, um, let's see, what is this? Uh, image adjust invert. And there you go. And then there's like, you know, lots and lots of other fun things that you can do, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the gist for, for faking some kind of interesting lighting uh, using ZBrush with uh, Photoshop.